<laughs> Whoa, dude, back up, back up, back up, back up. Christmas Eve, Christmas came early for us. Yes, sir. What's up, guys? Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't seen me before, my name's Landon Cher, and today we are going to be going out and catching pythons. I'm picking up Jacob right now. This is something we've been doing for a really long time. Usually we go at night, but as you can tell right now, it's the early morning. Basically, we're going to go out because last night was really cold. The cold front came in, and the reptiles are all going to be freezing since they're cold-blooded. So in the mornings, they come out to bask. Hopefully we'll find them on the sides of the levees or maybe on the roads. We're going to see. Um, waiting for Jacob right now. Probably going to go get some breakfast, get some Cuban coffee because that's how we do it in Miami to start the day. And then we got like a 30 minute drive out to the levees to begin our morning. All right, so we're in the car right now. What's up, guys? Just hopped in Jacob's truck. We're going to go to Pinecrest Bakery now to get some food and then we're going to be on our way. All right, so we just got our breakfast. We got the food. Got the food. Essentials. Got the essentials. Croquetas, if you don't know what they are. That's the key to success, guys. If you haven't been catching pythons or you're interested in catching pythons, you come on a trip to Miami. First stop, Pinecrest Bakery. They're open 24 hours. Anytime we go python hunting, that's always a go-to spot. Whether we're going out super late at night or super early in the morning, it's always the move. And this is really bright. Anyway, so we just got the food and now we're gonna start heading up north. All right, so we just got out here to the levee. Behind me is the Everglades, which runs for miles and miles and miles up north, west, and even south on the other side of the road. So basically we're out here. There's an area of water down there where the pythons are gonna sit overnight. It retains the heat, so they love sitting in the water. And in the morning, they'll come out here to bask where the sun is hitting on this side of the levee or out on the roads, even on the road over there. So we're gonna try to cruise this, look over here, look over there. Jacob, you think we're gonna find some today? Bro, I think we should. I mean, seeing all the other python hunters that have been out recently, I mean, they've been catching them pretty much every time they're out in the daytime. So I'm pretty confident that we're gonna get something. Super exciting guys. This is our first time being out here on a morning hunt this winter. So hopefully we have some good luck. We're gonna get in the car now and start off this morning. Let's see what we can find. All right, so we are in the car. We're just gonna cruise like this really, really slow. Jacob's in the back in the bed. He is looking down the levee and I'm just driving, kind of looking up front here, but as you can see, there's nothing there. So we're just cruising along. Mo mainly where we're gonna find the snakes is right down there. Gotta take it slow because these pythons, even a 20 footer could be right there, right in front of you and just the way with its camouflage could blend into the grass so well, if you're going too fast, you're not gonna be able to see it. Just gotta cruise really slow. It's Jacob's turn first to look and then it'll be my turn. As you can see, there's these birds out there. There's these herons. You can kind of see them, those big white birds. That's what the pythons are gonna be eating. There's otters, coyotes, rabbits, all sorts of game out there that the pythons thrive on, which is why the pythons are such a problem in our Everglades and why we have to remove them. If you guys didn't know and you're new to the channel, pythons are invasive here to South Florida. They're not supposed to be here and they're overtaking our Everglades by eating all our native wildlife, which already has slim numbers from habitat loss and other reasons. So it is our job to remove them. That's why Jacob and I are out here. Hopefully we can find some. So right now the clouds have kind of come out just as we started cruising and they covered up the sun, which isn't the best because the snakes won't feel the heat as much as when the sun is fully out. So hopefully these clouds will go away because it will help us to find these snakes a lot better. All right, well, we haven't found anything yet, but look at this. There's an alligator sitting right there in the canal. There's also a stork sitting right there. Always super cool to see the native wildlife and how they're doing out here. Everything is just coming out in the morning to get some sun. We're still out here looking. We're in an area right now that's really thick. It's kind of hard to see, which doesn't help us at all with finding these snakes. So Jacob's gonna go get that plastic bucket down there. A lot of the fishermen dump their trash or just leave trash out here when they come. It's just not cool because there's not many places like this that you can come where it looks untouched. Woo! Jacob found himself a new bait bucket. All right, so we just pulled up on an area of the levee and there's trash absolutely everywhere. I don't even want to touch some of this stuff because some of it's really gross. I don't even know where it's been, but yep. just pieces like this everywhere. All down there is just 
really sad to see people like I like to see people coming out and enjoying this because there's a lot of people in Miami that don't even know this exists just 30 minutes away but then when you see people come out here and leave trash like that it's just really sad so we don't have any space for the trash in the truck right now but we will clean it up next time because it's not cool but please if you come out to any park or natural area wherever you are just clean up your trash dispose of it correctly because it's not cool to dump it as people have done here and sometimes it's an accident and things get left behind but over here it's clearly dumped on purpose which is just not cool we just got to the end of the levee and I'm going to be in the back of the truck now looking for the snakes. Jacob will be driving. Hopefully we'll find a snake. I don't really know. We did just check this same area, but the sun is coming out more. So with it being hotter, a snake could have come out. So I actually started coming out and looking for snakes when I was really young with my dad. And I kind of showed it to Jacob when we were in high school, but I never came out and looked on these levees for pythons until Jacob showed me that. So it's kind of cool to learn from each other. We all kind of pick up our own little techniques and tricks on how we do it, but always a good time out here in the Everglades. So looking right now down the levee, still nothing, but as you can see, the sun is really bright behind me. It's actually getting kind of hot, um, was cold earlier. What's the temperature? 65. 65 degrees. I think we're gonna get them. I have a good feeling about this morning super thick right here it's gonna be basically impossible to see a snake whoa dude back up back up back up back up guys there's a python here stop ah, stop the car it's right there on the on the other side of the car not this side on the right on the right guys right there oh my goodness on here. Dude, we got a snake. Got He's not going anywhere, so we don't have to go super quick because he is cold, like you said. But look right there. Oh. Yes, sir, guys. Take Big, a look at that. Beautiful python. Jacob's on his vlog, oh. like I said, so make sure to check out look his at that, channel. Guys. But look we at that got python out sunning, baby. This guy could have been here when we passed with Jacob, but yeah. just didn't even see him, or he could have just come out of that canal. Whew. I'd say he's a solid like six, seven feet, bro. Oh yeah, at least. This guy is six, seven, easy. And they, these guys can get up to six feet in one year. Yes, From sir. a baby, they're around a foot long. And if they're eating right, they can get six feet in a year, which no native predator is taking on this thing except maybe an alligator. So yep. this is why they're doing so well so here so in our good. Everglades. Look at this guy here. I want to get a close up of his face right now, show you guys how he beautiful so he is. He's so cold. Dude, Look he's up. freezing. Really? So we were actually looking, like I said, on that side. We are in the truck coming this way, and he's actually working his way up. He's probably a little freaked out, but this is the way he was heading. He was heading the opposite way of the way we expected the snakes to be coming out on the levee, but you can see here, the sun is shining perfectly down here. This is how the snakes are gonna be sitting on these winter mornings to get some sun and warm up. Like I said, when I touched him at first, he was absolutely freezing. He's just beautiful, so. We're gonna get him into the truck. We have a bin in the back and keep looking. I think it's Jacob's turn now to go in the back after we catch him, so. So, I've never tried catching a snake with the camera in one hand. Come on, snake tamer. Now keep him distracted here with the camera. Take a look at him. Wow, wow buddy. a good strike there. So we got him here. He can't really sense my heat. Again, he is really cold, so his energy is pretty low. Gotta put him down, he's a pretty heavy snake. I don't know if you could hear Jacob saying, but all these pythons that we catch out here, since they are invasive, we are not allowed to keep them legally by state law. And when we catch them, we do have to kill them. Sadly, it is the way it is, but it's better than having these snakes out here where they're gonna kill our deer, alligators, otters, and other species. Basically, anything they can fit in their mouth, these guys will take down. And they can get almost 20 feet long, which is, three times the size of this snake. So if you think this is a big snake, just wait till we catch a monster. Jacob has some big ones on his channel, so go check out his videos. He has some monster catches for you guys to go see. I'll link him down below. But check out this little dude. All right, so good first python of the morning. 
We're gonna keep cruising this levee. Jacob's gonna hop into the back now because it's his turn to get a snake. I'm gonna drive, get back in the driver's seat again. Like five minutes of me cruising, find one. All right, so this biker right here in the rear view just said he saw a big snake going into a hole up here on the levee. Seems like the snakes are starting to move, so we're heading up here as fast as we can. We don't really know where it is, so we're trying to like drive a little bit faster than we normally would cruising the levee. Jacob's back there, like I said, looking. Hopefully we can find the snake. We don't wanna drive too fast though, cause we could pass it. Yes. All right, I just filmed. Hold on, gotta check the brightness. Be like 12 feet long. This dude, oh massive. my goodness. I'm trying to pull on him, but he's really in there. Ugh. Dude, what? Dude, look at him. He's all the way in there. I mean, he is just deep, deep in that hole. Look at him right there, trying to get his way in. Oh Ugh. my goodness. So Jacob flew off the back oh of the truck gosh, and just the ran down the levee. I was driving, so I couldn't really Guys. film too well. Wow, this is incredible. Look at this right here. All right. And this snake is it. probably like halfway in this hole. Comment down below how big you think this yeah. snake is right now before yeah. we pull him out. Yeah, guys, do that right now, guys. Go comment down below how big you think this oh snake is. How my many feet do goodness. you think this snake is? It could go back 10 feet exactly, in that hole. bro. Comment down below how big you think this snake what? is. But Landon, here you go. I, here, I need her. I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna take both cameras. We got camera one. We got here. camera two. We got him. Yeah. I'm, I'm, getting some, I'm getting some room on him. Come over here, see him oh as he comes goodness. out. Watch this. Pull him out, pull yeah. him out. Oh. We got what him. the heck? Guys, this must this. have been the snake. Guys, take a look at this hole that he just came from. Look, he's going back for it. He's going back to the hole. He's going to strike me. That's his little den right there. He's going to strike. All right, so just as we caught this snake, Ben pulled up on us. He's walking. What's up, guys? Where are you walking to again? Head to Alabama. Guys, Ben has walked from the Florida Keys, from Key West. From southernmost point. The southernmost point of Florida all the way to here, which is over 150 miles. Yeah, I guess I hit like 150 or something last night, maybe more now. Absolutely insane, super cool. He was like, what are you guys doing over here? And we're like, oh, we're just filming this snake, but super cool to meet other people like this that love coming out here and enjoying this stuff. He's from Pennsylvania, not even from Florida. So we were asking him if he saw any other snakes. He's like, no way. So super cool to show people that have never seen this stuff, it's the invasive animals that we have out here. It really sucks that you have to kill these things and that we're not allowed to keep them. This is just a beast of a snake. Like I said, not as big as they can get. It hasn't reached its full potential. This is why they make such good pets. I mean, this one is a little bit mean. He's cold right now, so he's not as energized to strike. A wild big snake like this isn't... Uh, now he's coming for you. Isn't so aggressive. And if I raised a snake like this from a baby, he would have been puppy dog tame. You see them a lot in the pet trade like that, which is how they got so popular and how they got so popular here in Florida, especially to where they spread in our ecosystem. If you look at this snake, he's solid muscle. They're constrictors. They don't have any venom. They don't have any fangs. They're going to bite their prey and then they're going to wrap it up with their 10 feet of length on this guy, choke it out and swallow it whole. Their jaws unhinge and they can actually open that mouth really, really wide, much wider than you'd think, and they can swallow probably a bird or animal around this size. So you'll see these guys with a huge lump in them and you'll know they had a big meal. But like Jacob said, we do have to euthanize this guy sadly before we go, but wow, what a beautiful snake and what a good way to start the day. Christmas Eve, Christmas came early for us. Yes, sir. All right, guys, so really successful mission. Was not expecting to get two pythons. That is gonna wrap up our morning. We're gonna head home, it's 10.53. Probably gonna throw this video up today. So make sure to go check out the video on Jacob's channel as well. His link, like I said, will be down below. Thank you guys for watching. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and I'll see you guys next time, peace.